I know 1972, we took over this building too. Yeah. They had Gofoyo in Angola. But Derek Bach, he was very smooth. I love my brother. He was very improvisational. He invited us in. He was flexible. He was fluid. But we still put the pressure on. The Harvard Endowment is gargantuan. It is currently valued, as of the most recent annual report, at $39.2 billion. Something happening here. We are in a climate the crisis, and the fossil fuel exactly industry clear. wants to keep it that way. There's a man with a gun over there. This world will not last, or this movement will not last. I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going on. No, Harvard producing too many smart folk concerned with money and just generating copies and echoes. I like the voices. Those who attempt to be original enough, like Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson. When I was in Emerson Hall, I was taught to think for myself. Be like Socrates. Socrates was a top host. Couldn't classify him. He was an original. From behind time we stopped. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's growing down. We are here blockading Mass Hall, um, blockading the doors to start off Harvard Heat Week, which is a week of action to call on Harvard University to, to divest from balls and people in the street singing songs. Divestment is the idea that if it's wrong to wreck the planet, it's wrong to invest in that destruction. Is this the way that you want to fund your university? Is all for these people's pain and all for these people's misery? Make our degree prison free. Make. Starts when you're always afraid. Step out of line, the man. Well, you know what? We've now got a way of marvelous moral militancy among the younger generation here, the students here at Harvard of all colors, because they want their voices to be heard. That's why they call it for transparency of the $36 billion. We want to know where the money's going. We want accountability. The rhetoric we're hearing from Drew Faust and the administration is that they don't want to be political. That that's not what the endowment is for. It's not for making political statements. It's not for trying to affect change in the world. It's not for standing up for our values. That, that they want to be apolitical. We are here to remind Drew Faust and the Harvard Corporation that even if they want to pretend otherwise, we know we are living in a political age. And so are they. And every action they take and every action they refuse to take Fix their side. We have just a few years left. We have just a few years left to address the climate crisis. To address the climate crisis. That means stopping corporate polluters. That means stopping corporate polluters from continuing to block climate action. From continuing to block climate action. And evading accountability for their malfeasance. And evading accountability for their malfeasance. things in the abstract and talk about theories of change but when you get outside of these academic halls and you actually try to get stuff done in the real world you find that the biggest obstacle to our success is the political power of the fossil fuel industry and the divestment campaign is one effort to try to undermine that political power 
professors at Colin Harvard University. One of the world's richest and most powerful institutions of higher education. To divest its nearly $42 billion endowment from the fossil fuel industry and to reinvest in a just and stable future. There are some people who take particular jobs to feed their families. I don't believe that those are the people who like deserve outrage. My both academic and my organizing analysis of the problem is above any individual, and it's looking at the institution and all of the business interests converging, how that creates the system that exploits, oppresses, enslaves so many people across the world. Now keep in mind now, it was not personal because each and every one of these presidents are dealing with structural constraints. They got a board, they got strong forces, money interests, most of them 1%, we don't hate the 1%, we hate greed, we hate avarice, we hate moral constipation. <laughs> And most people, when they have so much money and so much power, even when they know what's right, it doesn't flow because that greed gets in the way. We want some laxatives to set in. Let the good flow. Let the right flow. Do the right thing. And it's time to stand up to one of the most powerful and destructive industries in our society today. And we are the planet. We have to stay organized. We have to stick together. But this is a, a movement that has to be connected. You all know we just shut down the Brooklyn Bridge this week in New York. We didn't shut it down out of hatred of anybody. We, we shut it down out of a hatred of injustice. And it had to do with arbitrary police power. Just like arbitrary patriarchal power. Just like arbitrary homophobic power. Just like arbitrary corporate power. But unless you're willing to challenge the political power of the fossil fuel industry in our system today, you're not really serious about tackling climate change. Democracy is fundamentally an attempt. It's a grand social experiment to curtail arbitrary power so that those sly stone called everyday people can live lives of decency and dignity. And I'm here, we are here to call Harvard to divest because we see arbitrary power deployed by major institutions that are going to lead toward the destruction of the planet. It doesn't get more fundamental than that. It doesn't get more basic than that. But we've got to be able to come together and stick together. I think the issue of the prison is absolutely this generation's apartheid, this generation's enslavement, this generation's Jim Crow. Harvard has immense influence. The world is watching what Harvard does. I'm just glad to be a small part of this wave of activism. After 45 years when I stepped foot in this yard, my father told me then, I'm not going to be impressed by just the grades that you get. I want to know what kind of human being you're going to be. That's what my father told me. Oh, yes.